Hello poetry lovers and poetry curious. I'm once again in the collected poems of William Carlos Williams, Volume 1, 1909 to 1939, and I'm going to be reading Winter. Our randomized poetry element is rhetoric. So let's see what William Carlos Williams has for us today in the poem Winter. Now the snow lies on the ground, and more snow is descending upon it. Patches of red dirt hold together the old snow patches. This is winter, rosettes of leather green leaves by the old fence, and bare trees marking the sky. This is winter, 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 leather green leaves spear-shaped in the falling snow. So he's obviously hit on his imagism here where he's pretty much just giving you an image. He has stopped in his busy day as a doctor to attempt to capture something that he is seeing. So if we look at the rhetoric, to me the rhetoric, rhetoric is how the poem progresses in a logical fashion with or without cat meows. So now the snow lies on the ground and more snow is descending upon it. Okay, so we are getting layers of snow. We see patches of red dirt, so apparently there has been some melt hold together the old snow patches. So we can see that there has been some degradation of one of the snow light layers, but there's an assertion. This is winter, rosettes of leather green leaves. So it's, it's interesting so he has the red dirt showing through, but he's but the winter is essentially asserting itself. So we're in that process of winter when it is asserting itself. There are still some leather green leaves, and there are such things as evergreen trees or nearly evergreen trees. In my area, I think of the bay laurels that are here. That's what um, I'm reminded of when I think of leather green leaves with white on them. So we're, we're essentially watching the process of winter here. This is an, a snowfall, but also the, the larger winter. This is winter, rosettes of leather green leaves by the old fence and bare trees marking the sky. This is winter. Now he's going to super emphasize it. This is winter. Winter, winter, leather green leaves spear shaped in the falling snow. So there's a sense here with the leather green leaves that they're spear shaped, that they are somehow they're they're poking through the falling snow. These could also be holly. Holly leaves, they're not very big, but they are pokey, so it could be seeing them asserting themselves through the snow. So as for rhetoric, I think it's just looking closely at us in a still moment, looking closely. And probably it was the red dirt and the green leaves that attracted his attention amidst the snow but he uses language to assert the winter by repeating the word winter. But essentially, we're standing in one place, watching the snowfall to cover the red and the green. So in many ways, you could say that the poem 
rhetorically, except for the assertion of the winter, the word winter, and we know that the snow is falling, and it says, does it begin and end with falling snow? The first um, line is now the snow, and the last line is in the falling snow. So he is giving us rhetorically a sense of who is going to win over the red dirt and the green leaves. It's going to be the falling snow in the winter. Um, But again, it, it doesn't quite go anywhere. It just deepens an assertion, I guess, is what it does. And that's all I'm going to attempt to say about the rhetoric of this poem. I was going to say, it. you could say that it doesn't, quote unquote, go anywhere. And it doesn't. What it's doing is it's digging down and asserting as the snow, this layer falling upon another layer, as the winter is asserting itself. Okay. On to the poetry survey. Is this poem more thinking actions or observations? Definitely observations. Is this poem more representative or abstract? I'm going to call it representative and I'm going to call it pleasantly representative. But that depends on how, what you think of winter and falling snow. To me, what he provides there with, well, actually, he has the colors of Christmas, doesn't he? White, uh, red, and green. But um, I, I don't think that has anything to do with the, the um, poem, if anything. Those colors occurring in nature might have to do with what we associate, why we have those colors for Christmas rather than the reverse. Um, so to me, it's pleasantly representative because I like the falling snow. But to someone else who doesn't like winter and doesn't like the the settling in of the snow. They might take it as unpleasantly representative. Um, is this poem obvious, subtle, or does it leave you scratching your head? Oh, I think there's parts of it that are slightly subtle, but I'm happy to take it for its obvious aspect which is, it is a scene in wintertime. So, I'm happy to take it on face value. <laughs> um, does this poem progress in a linear way or discursive way? Since it doesn't exactly have movement, it's settling, like the snow is settling, it's settling on a scene. And again, it's like the winter is asserting itself. So I guess I could not call it discursive. Um, but as a linear, it doesn't go very far. It stays right here, which of course is why it's such a short poem. So I'm gonna go with linear. Again, some people might find this unpleasantly linear in the sense that it does not take much in the way of any steps. Linear would mean that it is progressing in a line with a series of dots. <laughs> and this has like three or four dots. And some people, and then there's just this assertion of the winter and, this, and the falling snow. Some people might find that boring. I don't. That might reflect on my own boring nature. <laughs> Happy with things that happen really slowly, um, right before my eyes and staring at whatever's in front of my face for long periods of time. But it's pleasantly linear to me. What fiction category is this poem most similar to? <clears throat> mm, 
it would have to be, I would think, well, it could be either historical or contemporary literature, but it would have to be a quiet moment, perhaps um, during a moment of resignation, a character's resignation for what is happening or what is to come. Yeah, in either historical or contemporary literary fiction. Which nonfiction category is this poem most similar to? Um, nonfiction. I'm going to say a travel memoir. Yep, that's what I'm going to go with. Because it's, I guess there are two kinds of people who would stop and notice a moment like this. But I think it's more likely to be someone who is new to something that would stop and make an observation and watch how this is happening rather than somebody who um, has lived there a long time. So that's what I was thinking, the two different people who would slow down and observe something like this other than a doctor at the beginning of the 20th century. <laughs> um, to me, it would be somebody who is who has the time, like somebody who comes out to do a chore and pauses in their yard and takes a special notice of the transition of the seasons, um, or it's somebody who is new to a place or environment, and, and so this first turning of the seasons in the new place is something that they stop and take make a special note of. Okay, what musical category is this poem most similar to? I'm going to say Paco Bell's Canon. I'm going to be I'm going to be specific. Something that kind of repeats or what what is? I can't remember what kind of Oh, no, nope, it's not coming. I'm thinking Bach. A fugue? Is it a fugue that where the elements turn. I don't really know that much about music, <laughs> but that kind of repeats different motifs again and again. I can't remember, but anyway, because this does, it's got the dirt, the snow, the green leaves, to some extent the trees, the winter, the winter, the snow, the green leaves, <laughs> you know, it just keeps turning around and round on that theme, those themes. Okay. Um, what sort of visual art style is this poem most similar to? I could see a photograph of this. Um, so if it was painting, it would be realism. I'm not going to say landscape because I think it's too focused in to really be a landscape. But I could see it as, an, as a, a portion of an art film. I could see it as a photograph. In a word or brief phrase, what would you say is primarily being communicated by this poem? that the winter is here to stay in very simple terms. Could it have maybe something to say about aging and memory with the leather green leaves being memory? It could. Um, but 
Again, I'm inclined to just take it at face value, the persistence of the winter. Once the season has started, it will keep layering on that snow. All right, and I do not have any other observations that I want to share about this poem. <laughs> if you do, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.